Hey y'all, hi. So last night when I was falling asleep, <laughs> I thought to myself right before I drifted off, it's been so long since I wore red lipstick. And then this morning when I woke up, I decided to just film a video, not about that, but a video in which I apply red lipstick for the first time in a long time. And I'm gonna try to have the rest of what I put on my face also be things that I haven't done in a long time. I haven't picked a ton of stuff because I feel like the lip is going to be the feature. And in a way, I feel like the other choices that I make on my face will kind of derive from the decision to wear red lipstick and because I haven't worn red lipstick in a long time, they'll be things that I haven't done in a long time either. So there's a little bit of makeup playtime, a little bit of resurrecting products and techniques that I haven't touched on in a long time. The kind of thing I love to do. If you're new to my channel, I'll tell you, my name is Hannah. This is a beauty channel and I sometimes review new beauty. But I feel like being a beauty lover isn't just about paying attention to what's new to the market and making shopping decisions. It's really mostly about about using the makeup that you already have. So I make videos like this one too from time to time, delving back into my collection. If that kind of balance sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I think I want to start with the lip because it was the inspiration for this video. It's the thing that I'm the most excited about. And also, I often find that the thing that keeps me from wearing a bold lip is whatever else I've already put on my face. So if I wear a lot of eyeshadow or even a strong cheek look, I usually want to downplay the lips. People tend to save the lips for last, and I find that because I also tend to do that, my lipstick collection gets short shrift. So the way to combat that problem is to do lips first. I have brought for our joint play Pleasure, Velvet Dragon by Lisa Eldridge, my all-time favorite red. This is reminding me that when I got this lipstick, when I first got it and I reviewed that purchase, in the video, the review, I swatched all of my red lipsticks, all the red lipsticks that I owned at the time, all next to each other on my arm with a huge long swatch of Velvet Dragon next to them so you could see the comparisons. And it was so interesting. I mean, clearly it was interesting to see Velvet Dragon compared, but it's just also interesting to see a bunch of reds compared to each other. I'll link that down below in case you haven't seen it and you'd like to check it out after you watch this one. But I'm also doing the most with a lip liner. This is the Isom Dual Lip Pencil, the red one. It has a brighter side and a slightly more muted side, and I'm gonna use the brighter side. I wanna note that I am not wearing any lip balm or lip plumper or a lip mask. My lips are pretty dry, and they have that sort of skin texture of a natural lip. You know, you've been outdoors, been talking for a while, you've been eating or drinking. There's just a little bit of like ridges in them, you know, the texture of lips. And I sometimes like to apply lipstick straight to dry and naturally textured lips like this and rub the pigment in. I think there's something kind of uniquely sensual, just casual and more lived in about like a real lip texture rather than one that has been like plumped and exfoliated and shined up within an inch of its life. And when I think about, now we're getting like into some philosophy, I really should stay focused on the makeup, but I'm not going to. When I think about like people I've had crushes on in my life or like been attracted to, and I, I think about lips that I've coveted, you know? Like lips that I want to kiss. When I think about like my husband's lips and how attractive they are to me, it's a natural quality, you know what I mean? I love lips for lips for being the way they are. When I think about beautiful people's beautiful lips, I don't think about like glassy, plump, like a slug, absolutely perfect mirror-like lips. I think about real lips. So there's just something to be said, I think, for taking your real lips and inking them with pigment. And that's what I'm gonna try to do today. Wow, we really went there. All right, the lip liner. Okay, I don't like as harsh a line as this, so I'm not going to keep this super harsh line. I'm gonna blur it. But first, I'm gonna put Velvet Dragon on top. I've sort of spread this around a little bit on my lips so that I can spread the lipstick on top of it and kind of push them into each other and really integrate them with each other and again with the surface of my lips. Because I use the liner, I don't have to be too worried about getting Velvet Dragon all the way to the perfect clean edge all the way around round. It's like a barrier that's sort of fail safe for that. But I am also not going to not cover the lip liner with this product. I once saw a makeup artist, I, I want to say it was Mary Greenwell, talking about how to apply lipstick and really having the model or whoever she was coaching go in on the application, like rubbing, rubbing, rubbing it in, blotting it down, rubbing it in, blotting it down, rubbing it in again. I feel inspired to do sort 
of that today. It's like I'm trying to stain my lips, not just apply a layer on top. This makeup artist was having the model like, mm, 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 like rub the lips together, rub them together, apply and apply and apply. So that's very rubbed in and it's a lot of product. I'm gonna blot. Mm, it's interesting, the blotting, I feel like it really brought out the brightness and the color and the velvety texture. And there was too much on, it was like starting to go a little slick and shiny. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -mm. Rubbing it in and rubbing it in and rubbing it in. Mm. Yeah, I feel like now it's not going anywhere. It's really become one with my lips, but I want to address those edges a little bit. I'm using the BK Beauty 210. It's just like a little pencil brush. I'm not gonna try to get like a really, really popsicle stain diffusion. I mean, I, I think this is too intense of an application for that. Just soften a little. So there I've softened the bottom lip and not the top. And I think you can see the difference. It just feels more symmetrical, more natural, more blended, cleaner paradoxically, even though I've made the line softer, but it doesn't look like a blurred line. It's just made it a little less awkward, easier to wear. All right, and there's the top lip blurred as well. I find this technique especially useful because my lips are asymmetrical as most people's lips are. So trying to achieve like a perfect clean line is really, really difficult and ultimately kind of ends up highlighting the asymmetry. And also as my lips age and I start to get those tiny vertical lines over the lip line, it becomes harder to get a sharp line and this softness really just like diffuses all of that. Wow, I'm really feeling this. It has been so long since I wore a red lip. I didn't even know I was missing it. And now that it's on, I'm like, where have you been all my life? So it's interesting. I just took a sip of my drink, putting that lip to the test. I can really feel the difference because I pushed it. I used the bullet to push it into the skin of my lips, which again, were unprimed. Like I didn't have a barrier on. And then rubbed my lips together, together and together and really pushed it in, blotted, pushed it in, blotted. Barely anything came off on the glass. And you know, this is a pretty sturdy formula, but it's not at all transfer proof. It just feels like the way I applied it made it as bulletproof as it can possibly be. Let us proceed to the rest of the face. So I brought down two kind of all-time favorite products similar to the lip, right? I was kind of trying to follow suit. Two all-time favorite products that I feel like I haven't worn in a while. So the Auric Glow Lust for glossing up the cheeks. And I also feel like I haven't done a super glossy cheek, like a cheek that's all about gloss, really, really highlighted in a long time. And I also brought Phytosurgeon's Condensate, which is my favorite color of the Skin Spark blush. I haven't done any like dramatic blush draping in a while either. I don't think I'm gonna go super hard on the cheeks because I don't want them to overwhelm the lips with color. I mean, I think what I'm gonna do is go super hard with shine and then build with color until I feel like it's as much as I can take. I might try to do more color-wise than I usually would because I love doing a red lip with almost nothing else on the face. I might try to do a little more than that just for the sake of the project, you know, making sure that the color of the blush like is part of the look. But I am going on to film another video after this, so I don't when I get like too overbalanced. I usually use Glow Lust as a priming product like underneath my base or as part of my base. It's not been forever since I like used it. I recently actually used it as a primer, but it has been a really long time since I used it like this, just like as a cheekbone highlight. And you know what? I'm not planning to do anything on my lids. So maybe I'll go ahead and put a little bit of this under the brows because I love connecting a shiny lid and like a shiny brow bone with a shiny cheekbone. Okay, I'm really into that glossy cheek. It kind of blanked out my cheek, so I definitely want to add in some blush. If I go overboard with the blush, though, I'll go in with more of Glow Lust to soften it. I love that there's that pigment in Glow Lust, that, like, really lovely bright pigment that works with my skin, this color, which is the new Morganite, which means that I can use it to tone down a cream blush if I need to. Isn't this the best color? <laughs> it's just the best color. Oh, I kind of forgot that it has been so long since I really went to town on a Skin Spark blush that I kind of forgot how pigmented they are. Taking it to the temples. And I'm taking it all the way up underneath my eyes to avoid that kind of like white stripe. I'm doing bridge of the nose too. Okay, so Glow Lust has showed through admirably. I feel like I've taken it down a little too far on both sides. So I'm gonna go in with a little concealer and just kind of clean it up. 
And I'm powdering on top of that concealer. I found my ColourPop powder, by the way. It's been lost for a long time. And I'm actually gonna bring this a little bit under the eyes just to soften that, like the highlighting of the slight unevenness, like that line that kind of comes down there. And then with the same brush, but nothing more on it, just kind of polishing up cheekbones a little more. There, I feel like that's a very gratifying cheek in a lot of ways. It's gratifying to use those products I haven't used in a long time and to use them in a way that's just like very them, like strongly about them. But crucially, I feel like I haven't overwhelmed the lip. And on my eyes, I'm gonna do something, another thing I haven't done strangely in a really long time. So I used to wear only mascara a lot. Like for most of the time, especially not on camera, I very frequently would just do mascara and a bare lid and then some other statement, like a statement cheek or a statement lip. And I actually went through a period of time where I was doing that on camera a lot as well. And it's just been weirdly a really long time since I did that, since I did like a lip or cheek heavy look, the bare lid with just mascara. And I think it's been even longer since I did it on camera and even longer than that since I actually demonstrated it. I mean, I have a little glow lust on my brow bone, which I think is working really well with everything else. I'm gonna use Lash Prototype, the Make Beauty Mascara, which started out so goopy and is just mellowed out to be like really buildable, really fluffy, really lovely and inky. And I'm gonna go for drama on the top and bottom lashes since this is the only eye makeup. I'm trying to retain that wispy kind of fluffy quality of the lashes while still building drama. I think that the heaviness and wetness and inkiness of the mascara is the thing that threatens that. If you kind of go too much too fast, it'll all stick together and it'll get weighed down. So I'm going in layers, building on the lashes of one eye until there's a full coat on, but it still has that fluffiness and stopping, going to the other eye and letting the first one kind of set before I go back and layer more on top. And also just like another layer, but still retaining the fluffiness back and forth back and forth so that it builds and builds but without getting too wet. It's amazing how much just a mascara can help complete a look, even with really bold elements, other elements. I'm also gonna put on some earrings. And yeah, I feel like myself, I feel like it was just yesterday that I was wearing a, a strong lip and a light eye and a glossy cheek, even though it's been so long. I'm really glad I had that thought when I was falling asleep last night. You know, I'm always looking for ways to kind of mix it up using the products that I already have to make what I have had for a long time feel new again. And this experience tells me don't underestimate the way you used to do your makeup or like a look you used to do a lot. Don't underestimate the capacity of that look to make you feel fresh, to make you feel like your stuff is new or your look is new. Because even though mentally it might be like, oh, that's a thing that's passe for me, there was probably a reason why you did it a lot, right? It probably suited you and looked good. And just because it's fallen a little bit out of favor doesn't mean it's not gonna feel good if you try it again. I'm gonna go on to film another video feeling very sharp and glossy. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, for being here, for subscribing if you've chosen to subscribe. I also really appreciate those of you who are always liking my videos and commenting on my videos. It really helps the channel and I really hope that you are taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.